course, I mean, if you're looking now at larger vendors that are putting together like their own ecosystems or basically ecosystems, because they are, yeah, you can run this and they have done some integration mm. to something, but it's still, you're still stuck there. I mean, uh, you can't really, you can't really have interoperability. You can't really change plug and play. I'll, I'll do. Okay, Eric Wallin from Idun PropTech OS and Real Estate Core. Welcome to the uh, Shit You Wish Your Building Did podcast. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. So nice to be here. Good. Yes, I've been wanting to get you on for a long time. And I asked you specifically to come to talk about um, one question. And that was, what does open really mean? So I'll just obviously let you talk about that because I'm sure I know you have a lot to say about it. But from my perspective, what I see is there's a lot of talk about open in the building technology industry um, and some confusion. So I want you to clear it up. <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's easy. No problem at all. Uh, no, but I think open, I mean, um, um, I, might be, I might be a little bit pointy here, but I mean, Open APIs that everyone is talking about is, is to me, is a myth. Uh, everyone talks about open and APIs, but I, uh, but you could basically remove open and it will still be the same. Mm. <coughs> an uh, API is an API. An API is an API and it is specifically designed uh, from whoever has done it. I mean, it's, 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 it's quite rare that you find an API where you actually can get portability, where you actually can plug and play and run. You have to do integration and someone in the end, if we're talking about property owners, then it's the property owners that owns the responsibility for the integration that has to be done with usually consultants. Um, I have, um, as an example, I have a, I have a, um, I just, just heard from, from a colleague that, um, that, that he had did five integrations to the same BMS system for different clients. <coughs> yep, great for him. I mean, but it's really suboptimal for for the rest of the prop tech society uh, when you have all of these integrations. So, and at the same time, it's I mean, it's optimal for all the vendors because it's really get this kind of spaghetti pattern of how you're integrating it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm talking very much about. I mean, I'm promoting that you need to have an application layer mm. you know, for of your data mm. on your buildings and all your systems. I mean, that is my. That is my <coughs> mission, and that is what we're doing with Real Estate Core, and what I'm doing uh, with, with PropTico is, is to build this application layer. Right. So if we were to visualize that uh, schematic, right, the application layer sits on top of um, middleware or, or your, <coughs> your, your hardware systems like the BMS, it, as an example. Yeah, and, they, and the BIM model data and the business systems and IoT systems and all, all different kinds of other external uh, data sources, weather forecasts, other, other kind of things, grid uh, data from, from grid operators, and etc. So uh, <coughs> the, um, uh, what I was thinking about, no, but uh, I mean, that is also when, I mean, when we started Real Estate Core more than five years ago, I mean, that was because of the lack of this kind of... Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you're going to make an application layer, that's easy, easy to say. But, I mean, if you don't have a harmonized data model, then, then it's kind of quite worthless. Then you will end up with a data lake, which is basically that you're pouring all data into the same place. And then every time it's, um, it's, it's, the, it's the job of the data scientist to try to refine the data. There is this, there, there is this joke that I... That I overheard from and uh, from from the nips conference that uh, i can't remember who it was but he said that everyone knows that uh, data scientists spend like 90 percent of the time cleaning data preparing it for using it for ml applications and everyone knows that is not true it's m more than 95 percent that i mean I, I, the, those numbers have, of course, just grabbed out of thin air. But I mean, the, it's the integration parts where you're spending extremely much effort and basically reinventing the wheel all over again and all over again. So you mentioned real, uh, real estate core. You should probably, we say what it is, right? But also how it solves that problem you were talking about of this kind <coughs> of give standardizing data, right? So... Yeah, Please explain. I, I mean, yeah, real estate core is is. Uh, I mean, when you are, I'm, I'm, 
I have an ac- I have an academic background and um, where I comes from just yes, standardization and mm. and semantic web working mm. with semantic web, and what uh, what you need is that you you um, you need you need you need to you need to have the perspective first when you're doing something. You need to have the business cases, or if you're talking semantics, you're talking about the competency questions. Basically, the business the business cases. And uh, when we did real estate core, we did that from a property property owning perspective, not from a building a SCADA BMS system perspective, or we are making some other technical system, but rather from what are the needs to actually run and operate a building. Uh, which means that real estate core has these kind of quite much focus on business processes as well as spatial. You really need to be sure that all system that you can say that if you had some sort of observation, temperature, present something in, in your buildings, you have to be very sure. Where? It has to be very clear to everyone where it actually happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it has to be easily interchangeable. Uh, and then, of course, you have to integrate with the different systems, uh, the underlying systems. But I mean, that was the uh, that was the foundation of real estate core, going from from the property owner perspective. And if you're looking at the at the compilation of the founders and of the board and the members of real estate core, it's very heavily uh, represented by large property owners. Right, which. In my mind, anyway, at least, differentiates itself from some of the other yeah. initiatives that are sort of more automation, building automation focused. You're bringing a different perspective to to this world of standardizing data. Yes, and I mean, we are working very close with with, with Brick Schema. We've done mm-hmm. that for many years, and right now we are actually working quite much to make those two fit, remove the overlap in a sense, so we could so we can. Uh, we will be inheriting all all the technical uh, models from Brick, and Brick will be taking our spatial and business model, and then we have a have a great fit. And the same goes that we are working together with Haystack and with other standards. The the, the, the second important, I mean, uh, foundation of real estate core was that besides that, it's actually have this kind of perspective of the business problem for property owners. Uh, the second one was that it has to be an internet standard, internet-like standard. It mm. can't be a local or a regional standard. It has to be built on a global scale because that's how... Uh, I mean, you don't want to buy customized hardware or customized software for the Nordics or even for Europe or whatever. I mean, um, that that will be too expensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You... We discussed open API and how mm. companies, vendors market themselves as having that, right? Um, you've mentioned Real Estate Core, which again is <coughs> is open source. Yeah. What for those that don't know, what does that mean, and what is the what is the difference between using open <coughs> in that context and yeah. open in in another context of software? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you have different types of open sources. I mean, we have. A we have the MIT license, which is extremely permissive. There's no cost. There's really no obligations. You can do whatever you like with it, commercially or not, and, and make your own version of Real Estate Core. We can't stop anyone from that. <coughs> and I think that has been... Um, um, uh, th- that is that that is what, like one foundation, really, that is really open, published under a very permissive license. Uh, the other part is the governance so how do we make decisions of, of this? I mean, and we have a very transparent mechanism for this. I mean, we're using GitHub and we're using the issue tracker and we're using, um, I mean, pull. anyone can make a pull, can can, uh, t- can clone the branch and, make, a, and m- add, make their additions and make a pull request. And this also makes Real Estate Core, uh, I mean, very transparent, uh, and we have a technical committee that uh, that decides on what should go in, into this I- with an open discussion when when you have changes, and um, and um, <coughs> oh, what was we going to say about um, the the governance process? Uh, it's um, um, transparent. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it, 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 it's transparent and they open. And the other thing when it comes to open APIs is that real estate core is a data model, an ontology, mm-hmm. basically, and it's based on semantic web standards. And it's also 
the uh, it's also the APIs defined because when you only have the mess the, the data um, the schema the uh, the ontology defined then it's up to the implementers to do whatever they like in like you can compare it to you know electrical uh, electrical plugs I mean you usually call these in, here in Europe the two thirty volt plugs that you have you're mm-hmm. usually calling them shuku. Um, the, the standard plugs that you have in for appliances in your home, then you have to define exactly the pins and the size and how they should fit in, in, into into the wall. And you're also defining the the frequency, 50 hertz, and you're defining the voltage is be 230 volts. Then you actually have something that really works. You have message format, you have the API, you have everything, so it works. And that is what real estate core is, core is all about. That it goes all the way. So. If you're following Real Estate Core uh, for um, for both the API specifications and the ontology specification, then you get portability. So if a vendor invests in doing their platform, uh, doing their application or platform Real Estate Core compatible, then it actually works for other vendors, um, and 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 you can and you get an interchangeable. Great, because that was going to be one of my next questions. It, it was basically. As somebody who is an owner operator of property, or somebody who may be interested in, you know, buying this kind of mm-hmm. this kind of software, is, is like why, right? Why mm-hmm. does open <coughs> matter to them? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, should it? Yeah, or should I? I, I, I will give an example of this uh, for for I mean, from the business business perspective. But I, but I mean, but first, when it comes to, uh, or, I, or I'll start there, we. Uh, did a quite extensive work together with uh, Schneider Electric with their EcoStructure platform last year, 2021. Basically, the first half we were we were to helping them to develop a native real estate core connector. I mean, put on their EcoStructure platform. Then, basically, the second half of 2021, they were they were testing it. I mean, I think I read somewhere that they have 500,000 installations of EcoStructure. So, of course. You have to do extensive testing. Mm-hmm. Then we did together with them on an uh, end client. We did um, the first installation or upgrade of the EcoStructure 2022 with the re- with the native real estate core connector, both APIs and message format and ontology, and um, and and then of course there was a little bit of rough edges to cut off there. I mean, basically installation configuration instructions for 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 the field teams. Um, when and you, I think it took around twenty hours to do that one, and I think that's quite good to do an onboarding of a of a uh, thirty thousand square meter commercial building. I mean, it's mm-hmm. quite many thousands of data points. Mm-hmm. Then we did building number two. It took two hours, and then I could see that this client uh, just recently ordered sixteen new upgrades of the system. Mm-hmm. So you could see Schneider was going from probably making some money from the consultancies from the professional services to now instead they got they could like start selling it on mass these upgrades so you mm. see how that is shifting mm. uh, and I mean from a property owner perspective suddenly it goes extremely fast you get this kind of industrial scales and this is thanks to real estate core and since we actually have this kind of uh, not only the data model but also the APIs yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the argument might be <coughs> if you choose to go with one vendor, right, you enter their ecosystem, use their products, their software, that should also make integration, <coughs> interoperability easier because they've tested it all, it works together. And I guess that's the argument for going sure. with 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 that. Why Why is that not? Uh, a good idea uh, no but I think of course that that might be a good idea for someone but I mean you would probably um, uh, I'm trying to find some examples of where you have uh, you can probably find in, so, in some ecosystems some examples but I think overall when you're looking from a property owner perspective you really want to have the kind of flexibility uh, because I mean if you have monopoly it tends to 
it tends it's hard to get technicians to 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 come out and uh, to service the buildings and it becomes more and more expensive you have to buy service contracts and other things uh, so i think that uh, i mean another trend you're seeing is that um, you're going towards msi master systems integrators um, that is that is actually handling this that the property owner wants this because it's not only the bmss that you need to connect in the buildings you have so much more systems and bmss might not really um, be enough to connect everything i mean you do i mean there is a difference uh, now you have my 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 interpretation of the, of of the term building operating system compared to a building management system i mean mm. when you're actually adding all of these business systems and uh, beam systems and other other things um but um um but 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 uh, yeah mm-hmm. <coughs> yeah I, i guess i would also add to that as well like I mean, you kind of described it there, this this concept of best of breed, I suppose, right? Like yeah. you also, if you do go into one ecosystem, you are hoping, I suppose, or at least <laughs> that they provide, in, in each of the things that they provide, be that software or product, that, that it's the best thing in that market. And it's mm. probably not going to be that, right? Because you're saying that one vendor is the best at everything and... Mm. That's not really how it works, is it? Uh, no, no, no. What I think, I mean, the, I mean, you're putting more and more demands. I mean, you know this old myth about people you have to spend ten thousand hours to be good mm. at mm-hmm. playing football, mm-hmm. playing the violin, whatever. If you paraphrase that to developing a product, if you need to invest ten thousand hours into that specific product for some sort of energy optimization or reporting or co-working, whatever, per year, or even more. I mean, in order to to, to to have a to have a, to have a good product and i think that more and more both vendors and property owners start to realize that it's quite expensive to maintain i mean functions and that there is i mean there is a reason from why we are going from you know like craftsmen that is that that are doing your clothing and you're going to industrial manufacturing so i mean i think this is just a natural We're just in the middle of this kind of trans um, transition from um, the trade of, of installing buildings. And you're talking to someone, every building is so unique. I mean, every mm. you, we can't have a standardized solution because it's so unique. A conference room with ventilation and lightning and something else. No, but we have so special needs. And I, th- I think that is a myth. I think that is wrong. I think you could probably go with standardized, more standardized components. And especially when you start seeing... What is the cost of having everything customized and being done by craftsmen instead of do, uh, having more like an industrial um, approach to it? Mm. No, you're right. I mean, I guess an, an analogy there might be with the car industry, right? You have lots and lots of different <laughs> um, types of car, but they've standardized on various things, right? Yeah, and 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 you, uh, I mean. That you have to, um, that you have to, yeah, that you have to stream. It, it is just. I think I see it just as an evolutionary step. Mm. This is just about towards hopefully more of a mainstream adoption of technology, which we haven't reached in buildings yet. No. Mm-hmm. Also, like in a lot of marketing material, I often see the term like open platform. Yep. <coughs> does does that mean anything as well? Like, or is that just an extension of uh, of you know open api or whatever it is no no, no but but yeah getting back to that one no but i think that when when everyone is talking about open apis open platform open systems i mean um as long as it is um, as long as long as it is a a a, a non standardized api then it's uh, then it then it's just marketing material i mean then then it's op- then it's not open Then it's just then it's your proprietary, and it's right because you still have to spend those development hours, yeah, consultancy hours, or, to or, get the, the or data. you or you're stuck. I mean, if you're looking now at larger vendors that are putting together like their own ecosystems or basically ecosystems, because they are yeah, you can run this, and they have done some integration mm. to something, but it's still you're still stuck there. I mean, uh, you can't really you can't really have interoperability. You can't really change plug and play. I mean, we have some clients that are starting out with one ai based energy indoor air optimization system in order to 
to uh, benchmark it against another another one or two other ones to see which one. And this is basically just to see that they technically work, I mean, mm. giving the business benefit, mm. but also to not being locked in and actually being able to um, to <laughs> negotiate the, the the price of the service, and mm. and uh, and actually not. I mean. When you're talking about something is cloud-based and open, but it's the same kind of locking situation. We had another situation with a building that had a older version of one of of a big BMS system, and then yeah, but let's upgrade it to the next version. And then it was oh no, that's not possible because then we're breaking the integrations, the three other systems, mm-hmm. and who should take the cost for that? And uh, so they are. This is window XP syndrome. Mm. <coughs> that you're getting into, basically. I have one final question for you, Eric. Like, based on what everything we've said, you know, if, if you are putting on your hat of, like, being a owner-operator or, or of a building or someone who would be buying this kind of s- or investing in this kind of software, what questions should they be asking around this? Like, what, what do they... Because I think that's one of the problems, <coughs> right, is mm. that it's actually quite hard to compare different... Mm different mm. types of uh, software and vendors what should they be what should the question what question should they be asking uh, they need to i mean no one knows in f- 3 years 5 years 10 years what i mean what standards what systems will prevail and what what will happen with different companies uh, i mean uh, will some company become really evil and increase the prices or whatever so i think the important part i mean when of course, I have a hammer now, so I see real estate core nails everywhere. But I think that is the purpose of real estate core, that if you are buying your new systems and installation on a on the same standard, give, if it's real estate core or something else, mm-hmm. that means that you can. it's very easy to switch if you, need, if you want to change uh, direction in two or five years or something like that. So I think mm-hmm. the important thing is that you have to put demands that when a supplier delivers a technical system, it has it cannot just be their open API within quotation marks, but it has to follow a standard such as real estate core or something else. Mm. But uh, th- that is the most important part because then they are future proof. Then they can replace the middle platform. I mean, the building operating system platforms such as PropTech OS, or if they have something else, they can replace that one. And then they will be, then they will have like these Shuko plugs in mm. the buildings. And they hopefully don't get stuck in that situation you describe where they have to break integrations to change. And yeah, and which means that it's really, I mean, if you're starting breaking integrations, then you're breaking business functionality in some other places, which means that you probably will end up just sitting on your hands and not, not doing anything. Mm. Great. Thank you so much. It's a great, really interesting conversation. And thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. So nice to be here. Anytime. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Bye-bye.